Hello, this is video number four in a series of videos that covered the basics which you need to know in stock investing. In this video, I will address the following questions. What are outstanding shares, earnings per share, and treasury shares? First, let us talk about outstanding shares. They are all the shares that a publicly traded company has issued and are currently owned by investors. So a publicly traded company can raise money from investors by issuing and selling their shares. The shares represent ownership rights in the company. Let us take an example. Imagine that a business just became a publicly traded company and will issue stocks for the first time. The company decided to issue 100 shares. These 100 shares are the outstanding shares and represent all the ownership of the company. So if an investor buys 50 shares, then that investor owns 50% of the company. Imagine now that the same publicly traded company wants to raise more money. Let's say they decided to issue and sell an additional 100 shares. This new round of raising money will increase the outstanding shares to 200 shares. In other words, the overall ownership of the company now is divided by 200 shares. If that investor who owns 50 shares didn't buy more shares, he or she will be diluted because after issuing the additional 100 shares, the 50 shares is 25% of the company's ownership instead of 50%. Another form of dilution when issuing new stocks is earnings per share. Earnings per share is the annual earnings which is the net income divided by the outstanding shares. Issuing new stocks would increase the outstanding shares, which means that the earnings is going to be divided among more shares. Let's go back to the same example we had earlier. And to make it easy, let's assume that the net income is not changing from year to year and it is $100. So when the outstanding shares were 100 shares, then the earnings per share was $1. But when the outstanding shares increased to 200 shares, the earnings per share is 50 cents only. This makes the stock less attractive for new investors because the amount of earnings per share is decreasing. You might ask yourself, then why a company would continue to issue new stocks and dilute their investors? The answer could be one of two things. Either the company wants to expand and increase their business operation faster than the organic way, which is reinvesting the earnings back in the business, or the current business operation is not profitable, so they have to depend on other sources of income to pay their expenses and avoid bankruptcy. In a future video, I will show you how to analyze the financial statements to know the real reason behind issuing new stocks. Before we finish this video, let us talk about the treasury stocks. They are the stocks that a publicly traded company buys back from investors. Buying back the shares will decrease the outstanding shares and increase the earnings per share. So you can think about it as the complete opposite of issuing new shares. You can find how much a company has spent on treasury stocks in the balance sheet statement. Many investors think that using a company's cash to buy back their shares is a sign that the management doesn't have a plan to grow the company. Because otherwise, the management will need and use all the available cash for growth. What do you think? Should a company buy back its shares to provide a better earning per share for the investors? Or invest the cash in the business activities? Please let me know in the comment section below. In the next video, I will talk about the stock market and brokers. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the like button.